Pranjit, um, thank you for giving us time and welcome to the the new Indemnex talk show. Uh, so I just want to you know uh, take us through your journey in surfing and that you in Chennai. Uh, I think when you started, it was just a small sport. There's a few uh, players were there and going there to international sport. I would like what we teach to be so. I uh, thank you for having me on the show. You know, I, I grew up being quite close to the coast, but never really in the ocean. So I was a obviously ball sport player. So football, tennis, hockey, and then this other game called cricket. I played that and never really got in the ocean. I, I, I didn't like it. I was a bit nervous of sharks. In South Africa, we had sharks. And uh, surfing was for the guys who, for me, who could not play ball sports. So I never got in the ocean. And then when I retired from, from playing international cricket, 2003, I was, I'd spent my life running around a tennis court, a hockey field, a football field, a cricket field. I said, no more running. So what can I do to stay fit? So I bought myself a, a mountain bike and I bought myself a surfboard. Because your surf, surfers are on, on naturally fit. Physically, being in the ocean, it requires a lot of energy. And uh, it's, you know, it was something that, that it, it, it saved me from having now to go train in the gym or, or keep running on the road. So I only started surfing at age 33 when I retired. And it was a difficult sport. I mean, my children are now this big. You know, I see the youngsters here, you know, in, in, in the fishing villages, they've been surfing from when they were three or four years old. And it was the most difficult sport to try and learn. Because usually when you're coaching somebody, you stand next to them, you watch them hit the ball, and you can talk and correct, and straight away you can make adjustments. But when you're surfing, if somebody is sitting next to you in the ocean, the wave stands up and they, they surf the wave, and I'm standing here, I can't see, but the, my surfing coach couldn't see that side of the way. So he would say, what happened? I have no idea. So it was the hardest sport to learn for me, but maybe I'm just a slow learner, but it was great physical activity. So I've, that was my surfing journey. And, and I've been involved with the Surf Federation in, in India, in no official capacity, but to try and help promote the sport, because way back in uh, sort of, in, when the IPL first started um, 2008 in India, and in 2009, 2010, Paddy Upton, who had coached with India with Gary Pearson in 2011, he had said, guys, because he's a Q surfer, and he was trying to help promote, and he said, you know, if you guys really want to get some media down to the circling events, you got to get somebody like John to, in, in a more modern figure maybe, but at least in John, in John you still got something Famous with the brand. Yes, yeah. you have a brand. I, I'm putting on it on the side. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, you know, when we first started, there were just, we would be one question about surfing and then nine questions about cricket. World Cup and this guy, and we had Kohli Sachin Tendulka, who better, who's worse. You know, would Kohli ever break Tendulka's records? Who will win the World Cup? And always only <laughs> one question about surfing. Just, I said, please, a question. Just give me one. So that's, it's been amazing how, how that has now changed. You know, we, we also had on, on the coast here in Tamil Nadu, when we had the, the surf music, yoga the festival. And if it wasn't for the music and the yoga, there would have been nobody coming to watch. Whereas now, the, the surf takes priority, even though the, the festival is still well attended, the music is amazing. It's actually the surfing. We could, and we learned that last year, the first year after the pandemic, was where there was, in fact, 2021, 2022, 2022, there was no music and, and, and yoga festival, just the surf. And, and, and that was really interesting to see that the surfing could stand alone, because the community, the surf community in India has grown so much. So that's when you realize after the Sunday meet because I feel you're not coming here for a stick. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually went the two years to live in Sweden throughout the pandemic. They didn't have any lockdown, but in Sweden, amazing. The kids went to school, people traveling on buses, and you know, it's been really incredible. But, and then coming back and, and seeing the standard of, of surfing, because there was always one or two really good surfers here. And, and, and they were the ones who had their surf school and, and, and they were coaching people. But having seen, and I think it's, it's a lot to do with administration, this sport, especially a smaller sport, which requires a lot of work behind the scenes. Okay. And, you know, there, there, is, there, there is no structure with, you know, there wasn't much of a structure within surfing. And that's one thing that I would invite you to certainly add it to uh, being president of the Surf Federation of India for the past two years. You know, it, it's, it, my wife said to me, oh, is it, do not people think of this conflict of interest because, you know, he's based here, he, he does, I said, this guy, without him, we would be at this level. Arun has not taken surfing. He's allowed surfing to go to the next level by just, you know, bringing the same business sense to the Surfing Federation, which was run by people who were passionate about surfing. 
They had their own surf schools, and and without a doubt, they, they really wanted surfing to grow. But Arun has the resources, he has the, the skills, and and the network that has taken surfing to the next level. And I think it was important too that surfing got recognised as a or introduced at the Olympics, but surfing is an Olympic sport. And, and as soon as something is official, you know, there's a lot more support you can get from the government. You can talk about the Olympics and, and a national team, and that's what Arun has done. You know, he's taken it from a, a fun weekend yeah. with the festival to suddenly, hey, India has a surfing team. He goes, does a what? You know, what is surfing, firstly? And they have a team. And uh, incredible. they've been in El Salvador, in, in the Maldives, Sri Lanka, and that's incredible. But uh, why did you get associated with surfing, and especially with this particular uh, club or uh, school? What well, initially I was, you know, I was introduced to surfing through Paddy Upton, and I said, way back and that was in, in Mangalore so that was obviously the time of the year where the west coast had good surf and it was season and and the surf federation was actually based out of mantra surf school which is a surfing match run in Mangalore on the wooden so that was my introduction to them and 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 you know and, and coming here obviously different times of the year um and spending time after IPL and, and trying to spend more time in the ocean because I just saw the benefits of surfing for me personally, physical activity, outdoors, and then also seeing the concern of, of families about the children, the youth. I'm not saying everybody has to surf. You know, we need to be active. As families and as kids, I have small children. I, I want to push them as much as possible to be in nature. You know, whether it's walking or trekking or being on the beach, being in the ocean, you know, connected to nature is, is, is really fulfilling. And also, it's such a learning process. I mean, the ocean is a, sometimes a cool master, but you, you learn lessons every day. It's so different. Every time you come down to the beach, it's different. You know, you can't get bored of, of as a surfer. You never know what the conditions are going to throw up. Is it yeah. When you're matting, yeah, maybe the wicket might turn a bit more or bounce a bit. But generally, the surface you're going to play on, you know what it's going to do. Yes, yeah. Every single wave that you're riding, you're very good. Yeah, so uh, you can associate the coaching as well. Uh, and fitness them. First, can can like uh, I put if you can can surfing be part of that cross uh, cross training cross training or in athletic? And how will you get through your endurance on your uh, flexibility? Well, the interesting thing is, you know, there's a lot of surfing and yoga that goes hand in hand. That these they actually complement each other. Um, surfers use a lot of upper upper sort of shoulders, upper back. Um, when they're paddling and yoga just and you get a bit stiff because the way you have to carry yourself to make sure your board then glides onto the wave um, and, and then flexibility having good core strength because as I said the wave is not still and smooth it's bumpy um, you have to have good hamstrings strong hamstrings um, strong glutes and obviously a strong core which bowlers mean you know they really do when they hit the crease and they're bowling they really do strong for core batting as well you know the power anybody generating power um, comes from the ground up, and it's not just about physical upper body strength, but it's about being able to chew at the ground. When it comes to surfing, we actually during the IPO with the cloud with the Lactal Super Giants, we had a few days off. In fact, we had a whole six days off between one, two matches, and we went. Quite a few of us came down to Bogor for a break, and uh, I got the, some of the boys a surfing lesson. Some of the guys had never been in the ocean before, so for the first time they were in the ocean. The first two or three waves that really struggled and once they you know got the hang of that they thoroughly enjoyed them so it's a it's physical activity you don't have to be a professional surfer you can be right close to shore two of the boys had never been to the ocean as i said that never swap so they were already threatened but you're only chest deep or you know waist deep so it's a case of when you start surfing and you become more accustomed and, and, and less fearful of the ocean you really are in an element that there is no there's no safety issues whatsoever and it's a complete workout. And then they left that session because you do push-ups, you jump up. Um, you know, as I said, your core is so important. Yeah. So you're you and you're balancing with the board because it's moving and it's wobbling. So it's a real, you know, you have CrossFit with more about strength and power. And this is, I love it because it, it helps the flexibility. Um, it certainly helps the core and the upper body when you start paddling on the other. It does a lot of work for your upper body. You know, so cardio is a cardio workout as well as strength training. So for me. Surfing is a, it is a great way to combine those and things together. It's, you know, you're outdoors. It's not hot every day. Um, we obviously, with, with our kids, we make sure that you know, we've got sunscreen on and 
we get long sneeze zones, spend too much time in the sun. But it's, as I said, connect with nature. Vitamin D is essential. We live in, as I said, Sweden for two years. We didn't see the sun a lot. And, and you notice it. You see how people miss the sun. They, they, they often take vitamin D supplements. It's, that's something we get naturally from the sun. Very, as South Africans in, in India, we take it for granted. Well, sunshine is too hot. <laughs> but when you're in Sweden, sun is shining. Yes. Hang on, yeah, it's shining. Jump out, you know, spend time in the sun. Mm -hmm.